Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I am Ben Chapman. If you are new around here, make sure you subscribe. If you like the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you don't, please let me know in the comments down below what I can do to improve. And we start things off with on Smackdown Live in front of 9,174 people in the Harry A. Gamble Pavilion. And we start with Sasha Banks and Bailey making their entrance in gear because they're going to be having a tag team match to open the show. And pretty much it is a case of they come out and they cut a promo on their way out explaining how they're, they're being screwed by having to do multiple challenges at SummerSlam. And if anyone even tries to take any of their titles away, they will just get squashed into the ground because there is nobody as good as Sasha Banks and Bailey. And that match is against their two SummerSlam opponents. It's Banks and Bailey versus Bel Air and Grace. And it only goes about it goes about twelve minutes and Bailey pins Jordan Grace with a Bailey to Belly suplex after a bit of mis miscommunication between Bank between ba Belair and Grace. It's pretty much showing that it makes sense. They're the established tag team. They had to beat Belair and Grace. It would have been wrong if they didn't. Yes, the 78 though. Decent for the guys and Belair was the weak link with a 68 compared to everyone else. In the 80s and 90s for Banks. And pretty good ratings for everybody. Gets a 78 overall. And after that match, we see Biggie cutting a promo backstage. He's going on about how he is ready for AJ Styles this weekend. You might not remember this, but he is a former Intercontinental Champion himself. He was the Intercontinental Champion six years ago. He's been around for a lot longer than people remember. He was existing before the New Day. AJ Styles wasn't even in the company back then. And then AJ Styles comes in and goes on about how he's how big he big has been in this company for years. AJ's been here since for four years. And he's already a multiple time WWE champion, an intercontinental champion, a multiple time US champion. AJ Styles does not feel threatened by Big E because Big E is a tag team mid card guy. AJ Styles is the main event. Gets a 100 rating, great promo from both guys. We then get a tag team match as Daniel Bryan returns to team of Drew Gulak to take on the Forgotten Sons of Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler. It's a short match, six against about just under seven minutes, and Bryan picks up the win with a jumping knee drop. Pretty decent ratings for, for all of them, to be honest. Even the Forgotten Sons had decent ratings. And after the match, Riddle and Gable come out to join Brian and Gulak, and it's Chad Gable, not Shorty G. And Daniel Bryan cuts a promo, how in the ring stand four of the best technical wrestlers in wrestling history. And they've always been overlooked because of their style and their size when they could wrestle everyone into a pretzel so they're gonna stand together now they are catch point Brian's the lead up Gulak Riddle and Gable as the other three members of the stable it's a 94 for a great promo from all guys to be honest we get a Hope you because at SummerSlam it's going to be a six-person tag. 
has Sonya Deville teams with The Miz and John Morrison to take on Mandy Rose and Heavy Machinery. We get a bit of a recap of their feud from Mania and before with the Dolph Ziggler stuff all the way through to the current stuff between Otis Tucker and Miz and Morrison and the hair and all. And it's pretty much just a quick recap package. It gets an 86 rating. Pretty darn good if you ask me. Six person tag now as Grand Metal League Lindsay Lardo team with Bandido to take on Cesaro, Shinsuke Nakamura and King Corbin and Bandido picks up the win with the Revolution Fly. He was of course the weakest member of the match but he's someone who I like. I do like working with Bandido and he is someone who I am going to push into a potential new division which will come soon. It's a 75 rating. After the match we see Firefly Funhouse and it's Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss hosting together. No splits between them. They are a team unified now. And on Firefly Funhouse they are there hosting a funeral for Braun Strowman's Universal Title reign. Which will end this Sunday according to them. And it's pretty much just the traditional wrestling funeral, except this time it's all in the Firefly Funhouse style. Gets a 100 rating because these two are phenomenal promos. And now they're both working together. This could be great. We then get a singles match between two guys who just haven't been used much at all this save actually. It's an Elias versus Bo Dallas. And Bo Dallas shockingly wins. It's supposed to be a shock. And they go a long time, a lot longer than they anticipated, 11 minutes. And Bo Dallas hits Elias with the spear. And it's just like, oh, and Bo Dallas was winning. And, and I hope the audience would be shocked by that and not quite understand how it happened. Because even after the match, even Bo Dallas doesn't understand how it happened. He gets up after the pin and he's a bit confused and like, wait, what? And I like, I like that whole idea that he's not quite, that he knows he's an undercard guy, but he's just beaten someone who he probably shouldn't have beaten and he, it was an underdog victory and he's, he's impressed. Pretty good storyline to start off with Bo. And next up is a tag team match, which is a rematch from last week, but slightly different. In an extremely short match, Heavy Machinery draw with Miss and Morrison in 145 when the match descends into chaos. What happened was, they were wrestling, the lights completely cut out. No, it isn't retribution, I'm going to say that. No lights flickering, they completely cut out. You hear a scuffle in the ring. And Heavy Mach all four members are laying in the ring in a square. Head to toe, head to toe, head to toe. We get a shot from the above to show this shape. And they're all just unconscious, just laying in the ring. And we have no clue. And the referee just calls the match because he doesn't know what just happened. And he can't really keep going in the match without unconscious. We go. After that match. To producers all rushing out. Adam Pearce, Sanjay Dark, Chris Parks and Lance Storm. All rushing out to check on the tag teams. And just like wondering what, what is how what's just happened. And we... Cut to Chris Park and last we cut to Chris Park who's gonna be the promo guy for these four. And he's shocked because like the Miz and Morrison versus Otis and Tucker match was supposed to be our main event. We still have 15 minutes left of TV time. What are we supposed to do? This match has just been thrown out. 
So we see Lance Storm literally running backstage to find the first two people he can see in gear and get them out to wrestle. Just to try and make it a bit more chaotic. And that is, it's Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. They've just feuded recently. It made sense for them to be the guys because they still don't like each other. It's not a match which needs a storyline. It could be a match where it's literally just two people thrown together. You can imagine like one producer went for each guy. Jeff Hardy was out in the ring making his entrance. And it's Seamus music hits. So you just see Jeff going, oh, God's sake, him again. It works. They go 15 minutes. Jeff Hardy picks up the win with a swan tom bomb. They don't click. But this match wasn't supposed to click. It was supposed to be a bit frantic and a bit chaotic. I think it's a 79 rating. Overall, the show gets an 86, which is great. We could have gained in Japan, Europe and Oceania. But we don't have the TV yet. We're working on that though. Well, that was a weird end to the show. But... I've been Ben Chapman. If you are new around here, subscribe. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Bye.